Okay, now that I have my production model AKX headset, I am looking to use this product that I discovered at CES 2020 earlier this year to protect the lenses. Based on the demo that I saw at CES, it's extremely effective in terms of its scratch resistance. From the website, it's claimed that it forms a thin protective layer approximately 0.4 microns thick and it was looked like it was fairly easy to apply at CES so now I'm going to give it a try very carefully apply it to these lenses and hopefully make them extremely scratch resistant that said this will not protect the inside of the headset itself from fogging up due to evaporated sweat or anything like that. So the first thing we need to do is very carefully clean the lenses. I've cleaned these lenses before, but before doing something like this, I want to start by making sure they're absolutely clean. The main risk here is any kind of grease, whether from finger or face, any kind of grease that might cause this material that I'm hopefully going to be putting on to, in some location, not adhere to the underlying surface and bubble up, which of course would cause very bad things to happen optically. Whenever you're doing something like this, the rule is always to move from clean things to dirty things in that order. So if one of the lenses has a little bit of dust somewhere, or you can see any grease or anything like that, then that's the one you do after the lens that's cleaner. Now I'm starting to feel the friction between the cloth and the lens increase, which I know from experience working on 3D printers means that the surface is getting completely free of any grease. As a reminder, I think these lenses are made of acrylic, so absolutely do not clean them with any isopropyl alcohol or anything like that. As for why I'm not taking these lenses out, just don't really want to risk it. Don't want to risk any difficulty realigning the lenses. If it was necessary, I would, but since it's not, there's probably more risk even of just getting dust behind the lenses by opening up that part of the headset. So I'm just going to avoid that.
Okay, I think that's rather clean. That was settled just fine a few minutes ago. Okay, now the kit for smartphones that they provide, if I remember correctly from CES, is basically the same stuff and basically the same process applies except that for the VR glasses protector version of this, it seems that they don't include this alcohol pad. Probably for the obvious reason that if your VR headset lenses are acrylic, it would be bad to put alcohol on them. Now, I've looked at some of the YouTube videos and whatnot, so I'm fairly confident I know what the process is, but I'm going to review this anyway to make sure that I've got this right. So they want you to wipe the screen protector uh, vertically and horizontally covering the complete glass surface for about 30 seconds. We won't be using this one, of course, we'll be using the one that's definitely made for VR headsets, but the directions should be more or less the same. Speaking of, yeah, they don't really give this in the form of directions other than make sure you thoroughly clean on this package. So here it says basically clean horizontally and vertically for about 30 seconds. Let dry for 60 seconds. Since I will be doing this only once, I will probably break my usual rule and go ahead and do the cleaning both vertically and horizontally as they recommend. Of course, for routine cleaning, you don't want to risk introducing a significant amount of scratches in more than one direction on VR, hens VR lenses, so always horizontal. Cleaner will remove dirt and oil from the surface. Very important that the surface is thoroughly clean before you apply the NanoFixit protection. Okay, I'll go along with that. Now, this part I'm going to test on a corner of the lens, somewhere over here perhaps, where there is little risk of any optically important degradation, and then go ahead and clean it. For the actual protector, I might drop a little bit of the protector on an expendable plastic surface that I have over here just to make sure that it's what I expect, to make sure it hasn't degraded since it sat on the shelf for a little while. All right, now we're going to use this unopened polishing cloth here. Okay, one side of this cloth feels like it's felt, and the other side of the cloth feels like it's just fabric. So that may be somewhat important to keep in mind. Now this is the cleaning solution, so we'll see what happens here. I'm going to have to open that a little bit more to predictably let out the cleaning solution. So I'm going ahead 
and doing that. And so while that is going to clean the scissors off one more time. Make sure there's no residue on the scissors while I'm doing this. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting the feeling that this is a wiping pad, not a cleaner that you squeeze out. And that would make, of course, that would make a lot more sense. I remember seeing from the videos on YouTube, which were mostly for the smartphone type, they were dropping, they were putting a drop of material on there. Okay, yep, just a cleaning cloth. So we're going to go ahead and try that. No indication of doing anything that would dissolve the lens here. I do notice a little bit more friction after having used this cleaner. So that means probably that a little bit more grease was removed. It's worth noting that all of this stuff, the cleaning pad that I just used, this microfiber cloth, until a few minutes ago, these were sealed. The polishing cloths that I used before that have been washed previously, so this should all be close to clean room standards here, just not a completely dust-free environment at the moment.
Also, this is being done within about a day or two of having started really working with this VR headset here. So the headset itself should have been fairly clean to begin with. Okay, I'm guessing that this glass protector in this case works exactly the same way. It's not based on a drop of material like um, this appears to be, which is for the smartphone product. So I am going to, in theory, open this, apply a little bit to the corner. If nothing terrible happens, apply it to the rest of this surface. And also make sure that I follow any directions correctly. So this was the polishing cloth. So this is step three for the uh, yeah for the smartphone kit. So actually, let's take a look at the smartphone kit again. Step one was the cleaner, which in the case of the smartphone product was an alcohol pad and for the VR glasses protector was something else, clearly. Yeah, it doesn't even smell like uh, alcohol. It smells a bit like, yeah, a bit like static guard, actually. Anyway, that's not an alcohol-based cleaner by all appearances. Now, here, this is the liquid screen protector. Interestingly, in the smartphone kit, well, I do feel a pad here. So I'm not completely sure why there is a liquid bottle and this. Maybe I bought this in addition to these other two kits. In any case, though, the instructions are probably still a good starting point for making sure that we do this correctly. Wipe uh, vertically and horizontally for about 30 seconds. Apply it to the back camera lens, which doesn't apply to us. Let it dry for 30 seconds. And then, of course, proceed to step three, which would be polishing. Uh, polish with the microfiber cloth until it shines. And you, of course, you wait 60 seconds before doing this. We recommend a, a second, uh, so this is the reason for having both the bottle and this polishing cloth. The, this apparently is supposed to be step two, if you, it's supposed to be the next uh, coating. If you use the bottle, you're supposed to only use this after you use the um, bottle. So that's an interesting idea, considering our use case. Is that really a good idea? Do we really need two coatings, if you think about it? In my case, probably yes. Um, in the case of most users, it's not like you're putting your fingers all over the VR headset lenses most of the time. So we'll try to get at least one layer on there, two if we can do it predictably. Before we start though, since we have this bottle, I see no reason not to try applying it to this expendable piece of plastic here. This expendable piece of plastic, of course, hasn't been cleaned to the same degree, and I may use a paper towel to spread the applicator, so hopefully it's a worst-case test for anything that might go wrong.
Now that was interesting. As I finished this process, I noticed a tiny bit of residue droplets evaporate off. Okay, let's review the instructions one more time. Yes, wipe vertically and horizontally. So in theory, that should have worked. Let's see if it's any different. No, not any different there. At least not holding up to these scissors. From what I saw at CES, if this is correctly applied, it should have really held up to the scissors. So let's make sure that we're doing this correctly. Gently wipe the liquid screen protector for 30 seconds. Let dry for 60 seconds. Yeah, I have to consider the possibility that this might be the cleaning solution. And of course, if the paper towel may simply soak up too much of this, making it useless. So we'll this time I'll ensure that's not the case. I have to suspect that that's not the actual product there.
Okay, it seems this is the correct material so far. However, it's entirely possible that this material here, which according to the resin code, seems to be marked PET, uh, may not be compatible with this material, whereas I imagine acrylic would be. In any case, I have seen this demonstrated at CES pretty well. So it's hard to believe that it's completely useless. So we're going to try one more time and regardless of what happens here pretty much we're going to move on to testing the corner of one of these lenses just to be safe. So far this material hasn't changed how optically clear the plastic remains, so I'm not concerned about this affecting the optical quality of the headset so far. The outstanding question so far is really whether this can do its job, whether it can provide any scratch resistance. Obviously I'm going to be very reluctant to test that principle directly on these lenses. In fact, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I might as well see if I can grab a piece of clear acrylic for this.
Okay, that time there was a very noticeable difference in scratch resistance, but it still wasn't perfect. So I think it's a fairly good guess that this pet material here that I'm testing on is not suitable for um, pet material for whatever reason. Now, I have, uh, I couldn't find any scrap acrylic that I had available, but I do seem to have this glass plate available. If I remember correctly from CES, with the coating, the, it, it was feasible to put very small scratches in ordinary glass with a uh, pair of scissors. Let's see if that would make a different, decent uh, test. Yeah, it, it seems to. Go ahead and uh, make sure those are actual scratches, not just residue put in the glass. Yeah, it seems to put very tiny scratches in the glass. to see. I'm do that a little more just to be sure. one scratch in the glass. A good scratch. So we'll see if this makes any difference at all. Of course, this is all not following the official procedure. It could be that this paper towel is not suitable for this kind of uh, application either. This is just a test to get everything right. Of course, it's also possible that the PET surface is too, is not hard enough. Considering the thickness of the coating this is supposed to provide, a very soft material underneath it would probably still scratch fairly easily. So it's entirely possible that this product is just useless on that kind of plastic, especially when it's this thin. That is to say, from what I saw at CES, I am a long way from ruling out those test results based on what I'm doing here. As much as anything, this is just practice to make sure that if I do this, I do it right.
And it did feel a little bit different in the area where I applied this. So I'm going to try to apply a few more coats just to see what happens. Also, I don't plan to use this bottle on the headset. Whether or not it's the same stuff, I'm not playing any chance it. I'm just going to go ahead and use the product that's officially made for the VR glasses. Good thing to see is that even with it beating up a little bit after applying this and letting it dry, I don't see it leaving any streaks or anything like that.
Okay, if I'm able to leave any scratch at all in the treated area with the scissors, it's not as deep as the scratch in the untreated area. Admittedly, it's an ambiguous result, and admittedly, I'm probably not using the best resources to test this sort of thing, especially considering that glass is a fairly hard material to begin with and scissors are not necessarily the best material to scratch things with. Certainly I'm not using a range of materials of different hardness to try and scratch this. However, nothing terrible has happened and at least I seem to have found a decent technique for applying this product, which is to apply it multiple times, let it dry between each time. So I'm going to do something like that with the headset, my focus is going to be on providing the best possible protection to the center of the lenses, where by far it matters the most. So, let's give this a try. If I use the material in the bottle instead of the material in this pouch that is provided with a wiping cloth inside, presumably. I will only use it after using this product first. So far, nothing catastrophic happening here. This does seem a little bit different than the material in the bottle. Maybe very different. All right, horizontally and vertically. I can see some suds forming, so it does seem like it's a good idea to brush this in the direction away from the center of the lenses. In general, that's also a good practice for cleaning these lenses, is to wipe away from the center of the lenses towards the outside edge here, where optical clarity is least important. Okay, I think we have at least made sure that we have covered the entire lens. So we'll try and put this thing back in the little, actually just put it on top of the pouch for now.
So after waiting 30 seconds, I think we're supposed to really polish the thing. So let it dry for 60 seconds, they say. I think I'll follow that advice literally, since I still see some areas where there seems to be some liquid. Okay, that's about 60 seconds now, so I'm going to clean it off with this cloth. Since obviously the smartphone kit included an alcohol pad, I'm not going to try and use the polishing packet from that. I'm going to use the microfiber cloth that came with this kit. The lenses do feel a bit higher friction than they ever have at this point. In fact, it's very significant. So I'm thinking that something has been done here that wasn't being done with that bottle. At this point, whatever was in that bottle, not trusting it. No change to the optical clarity. I see no reason not to try and get a second coat out of this cloth here, at least in the places where it counts most. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. Once again, I'm going to take the advice to let it dry for 60 seconds, rather literally.
on once again. Polish it off. See if we can get some more material out of this. Another 60 seconds. Okay, we might be able to get one or two more coats out of this at the most. Yeah, I think really just one more coat. Yeah, just one. Keeping in mind, of course, that if this is a very hard material that's being applied, a thickness much greater than half a micron might actually cause it to be more likely to crack, if that's even possible. Considering, of course, that it's likely that it would have a different thermal coefficient of expansion, things like that. Different mechanical properties, different thermal properties, maybe even different chemical properties.
okay, time to polish it off. The lenses definitely feel higher friction now, so something happened. Something that did not happen ever with the test that I was doing with the bottle and the glass or the PET plastic over there. So something about the test was kind of messed up. In case there's any kind of chemical hardening process happening here, I'm going to wait for a moment before I clean this more thoroughly. Undoubtedly, all of this extra care is unnecessary. I'm just being extremely careful since this is obviously a very expensive and very valuable headset and these should be essentially a brand new pair of lenses. And of course these lenses are properly installed in the headset. I've tested that they are optically well aligned so I don't really want to have to take any chances of messing any of that up if I can avoid it. Now that's interesting. That behaved very different. The condensation did not fog up evenly at all or anywhere near as much. Very different response there. Well, I hope I didn't take anything off there. Definitely going to wait a bit before cleaning it off some more. But that didn't happen in any of my previous tests, so... Yeah. None of that happened. Well, actually, there does seem to have been some effect of the material on the PET plastic in terms of how it held up to breath condensation, so there could be some difference there. Still, that test obviously didn't show much improvement in scratch resistance. At the very least, I've cleaned these lenses more than they were originally. There was a tiny spot of residue, and now that's long gone. So there does seem to be a lasting change to the way that's affected. I'm not going to try and clean this off any further for a while on the off chance that I might reduce the effectiveness. I think I will try and see if I can add just a little bit more of this material 
and a few important places. One last coating and then call it quits. Okay, and that's it. Obviously, I can't be completely sure that that did anything, but it didn't hurt. And certainly, acrylic lenses can use some help in terms of scratch resistance and things like that. For me, this was worth the effort and a little bit of risk because the optical clarity of this headset is very important to me and it's nice to know if I have, hopefully I have some protection from any degradation to that due to taking the headset on, putting it off, uh, and whatnot.